Okay, I wanted to show you guys what we're doing. Uh, this is how much it's rained. I got water in almost all my holes. But as you can see, I told you I'd show you how you can make your concrete forms ready to hold concrete for six bucks. Or four bucks, depending on where you live. And basically, I'm just using baling wire, tie wire. Tying the forms together about every 18 to 24 inches, kind of wherever I need it. Reinforcing the corner. That's all I'm using, just a roll of baling wire. It's going to work great. I had a viewer suggest using. The metal banding you know with the holes in it and you could use that too. run it underneath the forms and put a screw in it on either side that would work as well uh, the baling wire is kind of what I have so that's what I'm going to use and if you do this and tie it together like that that's how you're going to make them so they won't blow out you still got to stake it enough and we still have to put kickers on it and I'll show you what that like looks like before we pour the concrete but the baling wire um, is doing a lot of the work and as you can see I'm just resting the steel on the baling wire so that way the steel is up off the ground where it needs to be and that's one less thing I got to worry about
have too much steel. And no such thing as too much rebar and concrete. Oops. Sorry guys. Okay guys, I thought I'd show you what I'm using to tie this steel together in case some of you don't know. Basically what this is, just a twisting tool. It's kind of a little funny gizmo. Let me use these ties like this. And basically all you do, wrap it around the rebar. Hook both loops in. Give it a little tug. Just like that. So next time you're tying together rebar, go spend three bucks and get yourself one of these. Kind of get a perspective on how tall that barn's going to be sitting up in the air. We'll backfill it a little bit, but it's going to be pretty impressive. It's unbelievable that we had to do that much work just to get the thing level. But it turned out pretty good, as you can see. Um, you know, with all the rain, 
the rain started to buckle my plywood forms and it took quite a bit of work to kind of get them as straight as I could but concrete went in all right as you saw everything held together all those little wires we put in there did their job four bucks of baling wire basically held this thing together I guess on a few concrete stakes on the way up, if you were kind of wondering what this big elephant turd is, that is the base to my future power hammer. Now I don't have a power hammer yet. Heck, I don't even know when or how or what kind I'm going to get. But I do know I'm going to have one. And if it kills me, I'm going to have one within the next year. So I had the concrete on site, so I made this 36 by 36 by 12 inches thick power hammer base. Wired in a little handle. We'll saw that off once we get it set in place, but I wasn't sure exactly where I was going to put the power hammer in my new barn, in my new blacksmith shop. I haven't quite figured out exactly where it's going to be yet, so I didn't form it into the forms. I haven't figured out how I'm going to pick that thing up. It probably weighs about 1,200 pounds, but it should do the job. That's for sure. Thanks for watching, guys. I know it's just concrete, but it's done now. Now we can start doing some timber framing. Sure is pretty tonight. <laughs>